Hi everyone and welcome to the next in our Advent series and I'm going to be looking at Luke chapter 2 and verses 8 through to 14. It says this, In the same region there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night, when an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today in the city of David there has been born for you a Saviour who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. Wonderful words, and what a saviour, what uh, an amazing story. The incarnation story is incredible, it changes everything, and it should come to us fresh every year. Jesus has come to us, he keeps coming to us through his word, and he will come again soon. And because we live between these two advents of Christ's coming, it should fill us with such hope. And Jesus coming into this world totally subverts everything we understand uh, and see in this world about leadership and about power. Jesus really disrupts things, doesn't he, with his humility. And it never really ceases to amaze me the way in which God chose to enter into the human race. He left all of the glory of heaven so that he could abide with us, so that he could be God with us. And in some ways there are there are these spectacular events around the incarnation of Jesus. It's announced by the angels, there's rejoicing in the skies, there's glory on the hillsides. But then the zenith of it all is this baby who's born in the most vulnerable um, circumstances and uh, born in, a, in probably a, a barn or, or a cave and then placed into a feeding trough. And we see these angels speaking to Zechariah, who is probably a bit too old or feeling to, that he's, he's passed his sell by date. He's not going to see an answer to the prayers that he's had for a son. They're going to marry this unwed teenage peasant uh, and being told that she's incredibly blessed and favoured. And then, of course, the shepherds, which we're going to speak about briefly now. But none of these people really had authority. They were people pretty much on the margins, easy to look down on. Uh, we're not expecting great things from them, but we have a wonderful God. So shepherds, um, this is surprising, particularly in this particular period of time. Uh, they were considered that really the bottom rung of the Jewish society. If you couldn't find a job, you could probably find a job as a, a shepherd. And it was considered, I read this, uh, if you bought milk or a kid from a shepherd, it was considered to be stolen goods, whatever the story was, how about that? Um, and then obviously to the, to the, to the Jewish leaders, they were considered unclean, they were ceremonially unclean, they were always covered in animals, they were always picking up dead, a dead lamb or, or trying to fight off uh, a wolf. Uh, you know, these lambs were given birth. You were, you were covered in mess and the mess of animals and the dirt of the earth. But I guess when we break it down like that, we, we see that that's probably a good picture of the kind of king who was coming into the world, a, a king that wasn't put off by the dirt and the sin and the mess of our lives, but somebody who could come and change something about us. And so we see that actually God is the, the, the good shepherd of the sheep, the one who's prepared to get involved, to defend us against the works of the evil one and um, and we also know that these shepherds were taking uh, watch they were doing their watches over their flocks not their socks uh, by night and it's quite possible um, maybe this is a bit of an aside but they were watching over these flocks now flocks were raised actually for the temple and the temple system because every morning and evening um, uh, a spotless lamb would be presented at the temple as a sacrifice so it's wonderful to think that maybe just five miles away, these uh, shepherds were looking after a flock, um, you know, prayerfully raising those flocks that they may be used as a sacrifice for the sins of the people. And that these shepherds would be seen in the fulfillment as Jesus comes onto the scene, the one who's going to take away the sins of the world. So the announcement to the shepherds is brilliant. It is good news. 
um, and it is of good news of great joy not just temporal joy we look for that in in this world and we sometimes get a little glimpse of it but it's always passing away but this good news of great joy is not a a, a temporary joy a joy that um, runs through our fingers but it's something which is from God which establishes us in his reality you know the presence of Jesus takes us into the joy of God and the joy of God takes us into the presence of Jesus and this is good news which is not just for the wealthy, the powerful, uh, or even just the people on the margins. This is for all people. It's not just for the people of Israel. You know, Jesus is the God of the whole earth. He made the whole of creation. And so he would be revealed ultimately to the whole of this world. And um, it's, it's a great joy, of course, which is not known in this world, but it's found in Jesus. And so the scripture says that for today in the city of David, there's been born for you a savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You'll find this baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. And do you know today that a saviour has been born for you? He's been born for you because we need a saviour. We need a saviour for our sin, from the enemy, uh, from ourselves, from this crooked generation, from this world which is marked for judgment by God. Now, if we were to face any of these giants on our own, we'd be finished. We wouldn't be able to stand up against the, the issue of our own sin or the enemy or the judgment which is to come. But you know, uh, Jesus has been born for you, a brother who is born for adversity to deal with those things for us. God has come down for us, not to hurt us or destroy us, but to reveal what God is really like. And he's longing to reach out to us. He's longing to save us. He's longing to face those giants for us. A savior has been born for you, to live for you, to die for you, uh, to taste death for you, to face the enemy for you, for all of you that would know him and come to him. And so just as I finish, I want to encourage you, brothers and sisters, take a hold of this good news. There's so many people in this world, so many people in this city, sadly, who don't know that a savior has been born for them or how they might be able to experience the good news of Jesus. And so let's take up this opportunity at this Christmas time to share the good news of Jesus with others. Join those outreaches in your local congregations. Pray for your neighbors and friends. Reach out to them with the good news of Jesus. A savior has been born for you, amen.